Hello, I would like to show you my new favourite card trick. This is a nice little maths card trick which I learned just before Christmas. Uh, so I was over in Finland, I was doing some talks about maths in various different places around Finland uh, and one of the people who'd helped to organise the trip basically collared me uh, in the pub while I was out there and she said, I have a maths card trick for you. I was like, brilliant. Uh, and she said, but I don't know how it works. And she learned how to do the trick. She'd learned how to like make it work and mechanically do the steps of the trick, but she didn't know why it will always work. Uh, and it's a mathematical card trick. So it's uh, it's what's called a self-working card trick. So no matter what you do, as long as you do all the steps right, it will always work, um, which is quite nice. And what I thought I would do is show you the trick uh, the same way that she showed me the trick when I was out in Finland uh, and see if you can figure out from there. So there'll be a point at which you can pause the video, go away, pen and paper, work it out, see if you can figure out this trick and then come back and I will explain to you what I discovered when she showed me this trick. So we started off with a normal standard deck of 52 cards. I'm going to give these a quick shuffle just to make sure they're nicely mixed up. So just a couple of quick riffles on there like that. Um, and when she showed me this trick, essentially what she did was she said, okay, I'm just going to make some piles of cards on the table. So. So she just kind of put a stack of cards there and then she was like, okay, maybe just one card there. Maybe some more cards over here in a pile. There's another stack of cards there. And yeah, that'll probably do. Uh, and she put the rest of the cards over here. She said, no, okay, there are five piles here on the table. I want you to choose three of those piles. And I was like, okay, I will choose uh, these two back here and this middle one. And she was like, okay. She took away the other two piles, put them with the rest of the cards in a little stack over there. Um, and then she said, okay, choose two of those three and turn over the top card. And I was like, okay, I will turn over, say, these two. We've got a two and a four. So she then said, okay, give, give me a second. Just got to do some uh, some quick maths over here. Um, I mean, I guess she wasn't a professional magician. It wasn't the slickest thing I've ever seen, but she was like, hang on, wait a second. And then she said, that card is a five. And we were like, nah. And it was a five. It's a five, everyone. So uh, she was able to predict uh, what that top card is there. And I'm hoping that I've given you a couple of little pointers uh, in amongst what I was doing there, but I'm gonna try running the trick through one more time. Uh, and I, again, I will give you these little pointers so you can see what it is that I'm doing. Um, but I'm hoping you can use this to try and figure out how to actually recreate the trick, if not how it actually works. So she started off, she said, okay, I'm just gonna deal some cards into piles. on that one. Okay, so maybe this many piles this time. There's not always the same number of piles. The rest of the cards just live over there off to one side and I now get to choose three piles. Uh, so I'd maybe go for the three across the middle there. Um, so the rest of the piles get picked up and put together and put in a stack with the original cards. I then choose two of these and flip over the top card. So this one and maybe this one. So I've got a six and a three there. And then it was like, okay, hang on, hang on. Okay. That is a queen. It's a queen. It's a queen. Okay, so if you want to try and work this out, you can go away now, have a think about it. If you don't, just carry on watching and I will show you uh, a nice little explanation of this trick. Okay, so if you are trying to figure out how someone's done a card trick, even if it's a mathematical card trick and it's not a magician who's doing crazy sleight of hand stuff and hiding cards up their sleeve and what have you, it is often useful to pay attention carefully uh, to the things that they're doing with their cards and with their hands, because quite often there can be a clue in there. Uh, and the first thing that I spotted when I saw this trick done was that she was dealing from a face-up deck of cards. Now, that's interesting because normally when people deal cards, they will start with the cards face down and deal off this way. But in fact, she had the cards 
face up. Uh, and my suspicion was that the piles, the random piles of cards that she was dealing were not truly random. And I asked her about this. I said, you've got your cards face up. I reckon you are looking at that top card and using it somehow to create the stacks of cards. And she said, yes, you are absolutely right. Um, I am using the top card. And what I do is I count from the number on that card up to a king. So if, you know, 10 is 10, jack is 11, queen is 12, king is 13, um, you would count from here up to 13. So in this case, I would go 9, 10, jack, queen, king, and that would be one stack. 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, queen, king. I could just go queen, king. Uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, queen, king. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, queen, king. Uh, jack, queen, king. 9, 10, jack, queen, king, uh, queen, king. Uh, and I suspect I haven't got enough cards left there to do a stack from ace up to king. So I will keep those as my uh, spare stack of cards. And you can see now this time I've got quite a few piles here. This sometimes happens. You sometimes end up with as few as four stacks, but you will get uh, whatever number of stacks, depending on the order that the cards were in the deck, which is random because we shuffled them. So each of these stacks now contains a specific number of cards. It's whatever number that you started off with when you started dealing that stack and from there up to king. And if you think about what that means, it means you will have 14 minus the number on the top card. So if the number on your top card was a 10, you will have four because you'll go 10, jack, queen, king. If it was a king, you'd just have one because you just go king. Um, and if it was, say, a, a five, you would have 14 minus five is nine cards. You go five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. So each of these stacks is dependent on whatever the first card was. Uh, and this is a thing that took me like a day, like half a day after I saw this trick, I suddenly went, oh, because I just realized how it is that you can know what the top card is on the stack. And the thing to realize is that if you take a face up stack of cards and deal like this, I've got the ace of clubs on the top there, I am now reversing the order of the cards. So when I flip that over, the top card is still gonna be the ace of clubs. So in fact, the top card on each of these stacks tells me how many cards is in the stack. So we will remove all but three of these. So I'm gonna pick uh, these three across the top here, get rid of the rest like that. These all go back into that stack. So that's the remainder of the deck of cards. And I now have three piles here. So if I flip over two of these cards, say this one and this one, this is telling me that this stack contains 14 minus nine cards and this stack contains 14 minus seven cards. So you may have worked out, and I'm hoping you did, that when I was doing this last bit, I was actually counting the cards in this stack. And I'm gonna do it again, but in a slightly more obvious way. Not that there is much more of an obvious way. I was pretty obvious about it. But this time, what I'm going to do is count in front of these piles because you might have spotted that I count this number, then this number. So first of all, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to put those down there. Seven here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then if you were paying attention, you might have spotted that I count ten more cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, if you think about what we've got here, we've got 14 minus 9 plus 9. So there are 14 cards here. We've got 14 minus 7 up here and 7 down here. So we've got 14 cards here and we've got 10 cards over here, which means we've got 14 and 14 is 28 plus 10 is 38, which means that between this stack and the remaining cards in my hand, I have another 14. I've got 14, 14, 14. 3 14s is 42, plus 10 makes me up to my 52 cards in a deck, which means that the top card on here is going to match the number of cards in my hand, which in this case is 2, and that is a 2. So that is in fact how this trick works. Hopefully that explanation made sense to you. Um, and I had so much fun with this because I had no idea how it worked and I had to work it out completely from the start, uh, which was a really nice thing to do. And in fact, I showed this trick uh, to some of my friends in the pub in Manchester where I live. And uh, it was at a thing called Maths Jam, which if you don't know about it, it happens once a month. Please look it up. It's a great thing to do. Um, but the, my friends at Maths Jam basically enjoyed it as a card 